This video is sponsored by Linode. No matter what technology stack you build on, Linode makes it easy for both beginners and power users to host apps, sites, and projects in the cloud. To get $20 towards your new account, visit linode.com slash traversy. Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to look at JS Doc, which is something I've been experimenting with lately that I really like. It is a JavaScript documentation generator. So basically, you can add these inline JS Doc comments right into your source code and you can use JS Doc to scan through and create uh, an entire documentation website for your code and you can document just variables, classes, functions, modules, whatever, um, function parameters, their types, you can add descriptions, you can even add tutorials and stuff like that. So it's really cool. And you can also use it for type checking. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. Similar to how you would use TypeScript, only you don't need to compile it like TypeScript. And you can also use it with TypeScript, which I'm not going to get into, but you can do that as well. And this is the documentation jsdoc.app. And there's a lot of good information here. You can see all the different tags. I'm not going to go over all of these because this is a crash course, but you can look more into it um, on this website here. So let's jump into VS Code and we can install JS Doc with NPM and you can use it on the back end with Node Express. So you can also use it on the front end. You can use it with React or Vue or whatever you want to use it with to document your code. All right, so let's go ahead and NPM init dash y just to create a package dot json i'm going to try to go kind of fast because I don't, i don't want the video to be too too long um, so let's npm install as a dev dependency js doc okay so that should get added to our package dot json file now js doc needs a config file actually you don't need to create it it will use defaults if you don't but we're going to go ahead and create js doc dot json And I'm going to just uh, let me just grab this real quick. I'm going to paste this in so I don't have to type it all out and just go over it. So basically source is is where JS doc is going to look and we're going to have a folder called source. You can have an array here of different folders if you want, um, but we're going to have one source folder. We're going to include anything that ends with dot JS and we're going to exclude any node modules or docs folders because docs is what I used as the destination when it when it goes through and creates the documentation website, it'll be put in this docs folder. If you don't have this, it'll just create a folder, I believe, called opt OPT and then plugins. So this plot will allow you allow you to use markdown um, this monospace clever links. This is just going to make it so that when you have links within your documentation, it'll have a monospace font and then recurse will allow us to basically recurse into subfolders. Okay, so it'll look below just the root uh, level. So let's save this. And then what we want to do is go to our package.json and create a script to run this. You can also install it. Um, oops, you can install it globally if you want. Um, but we're going to just we're going to do it local and just add a script. So let's say uh, JS doc and then we want to do the config file, which is J. Uh, js doc dot json okay so it'll always look at this config file for whatever settings we have all right and then let's create our source folder okay so this is where your actual code goes and we'll just have an index dot js and then i'm going to run npm run doc all right so As you can see over here, it created a folder called docs, and this is our documentation website. It was just generated for us. And then we have no code right now, but it still will generate. And if we check, take a look at the uh, index HTML, it'll look like this by default. And this is the default template. There's a couple other templates you can use. You can create your own templates. Um, if you want to change something like this home right here, I'm going to show you how we can edit the default template. Um, without actually changing it in the node modules folder, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and just add something to our index JS. So, I mean, I'm just going to add a variable for now. So let's say student name and let's set that to John Doe. Basically, I want to add this to my documentation and I want to also add a type. I want to use type checking. 
to add a JS doc comment in VS Code, we can just do slash and then two asterisks and it will automatically finish for us. And then we can hit enter and then add whatever um, JS doc tags we want. In this case, we want to add a type and this is going to be a string type. We can also add a description here so we can say like student name, which is pretty obvious. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to save this and go down here and generate our docs and then visit the website here. And now you'll see we have global because we're in the global scope and then we have our student name variable or member and it gives us the name of it, the description that we put, the type, which is string and then the source, which is the file and the line number. And I can actually click on the line and it will show me in my documentation that line highlighted. Okay, so pretty cool. And if we want this, if we want to have actual type checking, which I do have enabled, you'll see if I change this to a one, I'm going to get this red squiggly line that says type one is not assignable to string. So it works kind of like TypeScript. Now, by default, this isn't going to work. What I what I've done is in my settings, if I go to my um, settings, JSON file right here, this is the this is what's allowing that to happen. So JavaScript dot implicit project config dot JS is true. If I set that to false or I don't have this at all, then it's not going to do that. It's not going to show me that red line or anything. All right. Uh, it'll also show me in the property down. Oh, actually, no, it doesn't. Does it Let's set that back to true? Yeah, so now you'll see down here type one is not assignable to string. All right. Now, if you don't want to add that um, global setting, what you can do is in your file, you can add inside of a comment TS check like that. And that will do the same thing without needing that setting. All right. So that's a, a string. Uh, well, let's change it back to John Doe and you can do numbers, Boolean, basically all the JavaScript types. You can also do arrays and objects. So I just want to show you that real quick. Let's say we have an array of grades. So um, say 98, 97.7 decimals are numbers in JavaScript, 76 and 89. If I want this to be an array, we can go ahead and add a type, not a type def. We'll get into that after. So type is going to be array. Okay, and we'll, for the description, we'll say an array of grades. Okay, now if I put in, let's say a Boolean here, that's fine right now because I'm just saying it's type array. But if we want it to be an array of numbers, we can add some um, angle brackets and say number. And now you can see I get an error that says type true is not assignable to number. Okay, so if you know it's going to be an array of numbers or strings or whatever, you can put that in here. Now, let's say we wanted an object like uh, to do with an ID and a text value, which is a string. Okay, so if we want to do that oops, in JS doc, we can add type and inside double curly braces, we can say this has to have an ID that's a number and it has to have a text value that is a string. If I add something else in here, I'm going to get an error because it doesn't adhere to um, basically the model, which is an ID and text, just like you can do in TypeScript. And then if I change, let's see, I'll change this to a string. I'm going to get an error because this is supposed to be a number. Now you can also have multiple types. Let's say this ID It can be a number or a string. We can simply put a pipe character in here and put string and now it can be either. So let's see. Let's save that and generate the documentation. And now you can see we have our student name, our to do gives us the type, the description and the line number. I actually didn't add a description here. We'll just say to do object. All right. Now, before we move on to functions and params and stuff like that, Uh, I want to show you how we can edit the template if we want. So if we go into node modules and then uh, JS doc and then templates, you'll see the default template that's used by default. And we can describe what template we want to use from within our config. 
Uh, but what I want to do is edit the default template and you never want to edit something in your node modules folder, almost never. So what we can do is just copy this folder, this default, and we can put it right in our root. And um, let's just rename it to uh, custom dash template. Okay, and then we can go to our config, our JS doc dot JSON, and we can add in our ops right here. We can add template and set it to custom template. It's in the same directory, so that's fine. And now let's go into custom template and publish JS and do a search for home. And let's say we want to change this to um, Um, what do we want to change this to? We'll just say JS doc example. But this home right here will also change to JS doc example or whatever you want. And then I'll save and then let's regenerate our documentation. And if we go back, if we go right here, JS doc example, JS doc example. Okay, and if you want to, you can, I mean, you can get rid of this. There's different, there's basically partials. If you look in um, right here, this TMPL, there's all these TMPL files um, where you can, you can edit those as well. But you never want to edit the actual template in the node modules folder. All right, so let's see what else do we want to do. Let's move on to functions and params. So let's say we have a function. I'm actually going to just... Uh, Just grab this real quick. All right, so it's just a very simple function to calculate tax and you can use an arrow function or um, you know, regular function. It doesn't matter. It'll still document it the same way. So it takes in an amount like 100 and then a percentage like 50. Actually, let's do like 10.1. Um, and we'll save this and just run the file so we can say node source slash index or since it's called index, we can just do node source and we get one hundred and ten dollars. Now I want to document this, so let's actually just get rid of the console log. So we'll put in a slash and then two asterisks and enter and notice that it actually looks at the params and creates the param tags with the name of the variables here. Um, and then we just want to change the type to number. All right, we'll give the function a, a description. We'll just say calculate tax. Um, what else? You could put any function you want. This is just something quick I just put in. And then we can put a description for each parameter. So we'll just say total amount. And this is the tax percentage. Okay, and then with functions, we can do a return or returns turns uh, if it doesn't have a return value you can do void but this re actually returns a string and it returns the total with a dollar sign okay so yeah because I'm returning a, a template literal here with back ticks and I have a dollar sign in front of the amount let's save that and let's run Our documentation. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not right. We want to run npm run doc. And if we take a look now over here, you'll see calculate tax. Now, these are all our members, basically our global variables. And then we have methods. Okay, so any methods we create will be put here. We have calculate tax, which returns a string. We have the description and then it gives us this cool little table for parameters. So the name, the type and the description. And then, of course, we can locate that function in our source code. So this is great for someone that, you know, just I mean, if you're working with someone else's code, this really helps see what everything is, what it does. So, I mean, it can be really helpful when you're collaborating with other people. So next thing I want to show you is how to create custom types, something called a type def or a type definition. So let's say we want to create a, a type called student. So let's go down here and let's say inside our JS stock, we'll say a student. Um, we'll just say, yeah, a student. That's fine. And then we want to use at type def. 
Okay, so we're defining a type which is going to be an object of, and it's going to be called student. Okay, and then the student is going to have certain properties. So we'll say property, give this property a type of number, and we'll call this ID, give it a description, and we'll say uh, student ID. All right, we'll just copy this down a couple times. So this next one here is going to be the name. So we'll say name and that's going to be whoops, I did that wrong. This should be string. And then this should be name. Student name. Uh, let's do the age of the student. So this will be and for this one, I'll do a string or A number either one will be fine and I also want to make it optional if you want an optional value here you can put brackets around it okay so we'll say student age which is optional and then let's, let's say let's do a boolean because we haven't done a boolean yet so we'll say boolean and we'll call this one is active so we'll say student is active And then down here, let's go ahead and use it. So we're going to put in another JS doc comment and we're going to put in our type. Okay, just like we did for our variables above, except now instead of string or number or something like that, we're going to put in our student type. All right. And then let's say const student and we'll say ID one. Whoops. ID one. Let's say name. John Doe. What else? Age uh, 20 and is active. True. Okay, and everything is fine here. Now, if I were to change, let's see, is active to a one, we're going to get an error because it's supposed to be a number. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a Boolean, but it is a number. Um, if I get rid of is active, We're going to get an error because is active is not optional. However, if I get rid of age, since we put brackets around it, we're not going to get a warning. Okay, and again, it's up to you if you want to use it for type checking or not. And, you know, if you want to enable that that functionality. But let's go ahead and generate our docs. And let's take a look over here and we have um, student. Okay, we also have student name. So student name is the member right here. And if we look at the type, well, I guess, oh wait, no, it's not student name, it was student. This right here, uh, student, and it has the type of student. Okay, see that? And then if we go down, actually, wait a minute. All right, oh, it's right in front of my eyes, type definition. So we have a, a student type. Uh, ultimately, it's an object, but our properties here, ID number um, and you can have attributes as well. So ID name age, which is optional, is active. And then if we want to locate that type def, it'll take us to that in our documentation. So now what I want to do is give you an example of a class, okay? because up to this point, we've been just kind of working in the um, like the global scope. So let's create a class and we'll call this person just something very simple. And we want to give this basically just a description. So we'll say class to create a person object and then let's have a constructor. And I'm, I mean, I'm not going to explain what a class is or a constructor or anything like that. Um, this is geared towards people, people that already know that. If you don't, I would suggest watching either my JavaScript crash course on YouTube or my modern JavaScript from the beginning on Udemy. So constructor, let's say it takes in an object called person info. So we can put here a param tag. So if we put our JS doc here, we can say param object person info and we can put a description here if we want like info or information about the person and in our constructor 
let's take let's say this dot name will create a name property and set it to that person info name and then let's take uh, this dot age and set that to the person info dot age okay and then we can add here our js doc and we can add a property so let's say property because it's a property of a class it's a string of name and we'll say person's name all right we can do the same thing for age so person's age age Okay, so that's our constructor and then let's just create um, we'll just create a method here and let's call this greet and we're just going to do a console log here of a template string and let's say hello my name is and we can say this dot name and I am this dot age. So that's kind of a silly example, but it's just to kind of show you how to use JS doc. So above greet, so above any method, we can go ahead and put in here a property and this is a function called greet, say a greeting with the name and age. And then we can put a returns. Okay, so this is going to return void because it's just a console log, so it's not going to return anything. Okay, so let's see. We'll go ahead and save that, and let's run our doc. And you can see it actually created a new file called person HTML. So any class you create, it'll create that file. And then if we check it out. Notice that now, in addition to just our global scope, we have classes. And if we click on person, this gives us all the information about our person class, It gives us the description. So the constructor, the, the uh, parameters for the constructor, which is the person info, which is an object. We have the members, which is an age name methods. We only have one method called greet and we can go to it here if we want. And I just want to show you a real quick uh, link. So let's say we have let's just initialize uh, a person here. So we'll say we'll call this person one, set it to new person. Okay, so we're just using our person class. And remember, it takes in an object with a name and an age. And then I don't know, we'll just do a console log here of person one dot greet. And we'll just run the file, see if that works. So node source, we get hello. My name is John Doe and I'm 30. Um, I'm not sure what the undefined is, actually. I don't know, but that's fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter. What I want to show you here is we can actually link to stuff. So we can say like C, let's say person. I don't know person one, but I just want to show you we can do C and then we can use link like this link um, and then we want to link to the person class because this variable is related to that person class. So if I go ahead and generate our docs and now we take a look um, over here, you'll see person one and right here person one, the description and C person. So if I click on that, it'll actually take me to the class so you can link to other parts of the documentation, you know, from certain parts, which is pretty cool. All right, I'll probably just get rid of that. So let's see what I want to do next. Let's do modules. So a lot of times you might have separate modules and this works with both common JS, which is You know, when you're working in Node.js and you use the require syntax or ES 2015 modules, when you use import export, you know, if you're in React or Vue or wherever you want to use ES 2015 modules. So I'm going to create a new file here called in my source folder called calculator.js. And it's just going to be a bunch of methods. So I'm going to let's see, yeah, I'm just going to. 
paste this in. Just give me a second. All right. So I'm going to paste this in and just go over it. So when we create uh, another file, basically that we're going to bring in, it's a module and we can just define it with the module tag here, calculator, give it a description. Um, and then I just have a, you know, add, multiply, subtract and divide just as separate functions. I'm using shorthand arrow function syntax. And I just have just like I showed you before, just the params and then the return. Okay, so nothing new here. It's just all in a module and we just called it calculator. So let's save this and let's go to index.js and bring this in up top. So I'm I'm using node, so I'm going to use the common JS syntax. So we'll say const and then we'll just bring in we'll use destructuring to bring in all the methods from um, calculator. Or actually, I'm sorry, we need to do dot slash calculator. Okay, so we can bring in, you know, add, subtract, divide and multiply. And then if we want to use it, we can go down here. And we'll just say, um, I don't know, console log and we can take add. We'll add 20 and 50. And notice that it gives me that checking. Okay, so it tells me that it needs uh, two arguments. So we'll say 20 and 30 and then I'll just run this node source and we get 50. Okay, now let's generate our documentation and take a look. Let's just reload this. Uh, actually, let's go to. Okay. So over here now you'll see we have modules. So for every module you create, whether it's ES 2015 or common JS, it'll show the, the module here. And if I click on it, we get all the information about that module. So the description, the source, all the methods along with their parameters. Okay, so you can see, you know, number and one and two first number, second number. And it just basically documents that module. Okay, just like it documents the class and then any global entities that we have here. So it's pretty cool. I, I really like this. I think it's uh, it is very verbose. I mean, you know, having to put all these comments in, but it makes things clearer, um, even just in the code, you know, so you know what's what. So, I, I mean, there's pros and cons to it. My job isn't to try to convince you to use it. It's to just show it to you and then. You take it upon yourself if you want to use it or not. All right. So let's see. What else do I want to show you guys? Let's do let's look at tutorials because you can actually add tutorials to your documentation. So what we can do is go to our uh, JS doc dot Jason. And from here we can add. Tutorials and then we can have a folder where we want to display our tutorials, which is going to be. tutorials. All right. Uh, actually, let's do dot slash. We should probably do that. Yeah. So inside our root here, we're going to create a folder called tutorials. Now, tutorials can be either HTML or Markdown. I believe they can be XML. There's a there's a couple different um, formats you can use, but I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to call it program dash tutorial dot HTML and then we'll just generate an HTML file and let's say program tutorial and we'll just put a paragraph here with uh, I don't know, a bunch of dummy text. All right, so I'll save that. Um, let's create one more. So this one, let's say uh, calculator tutorial and this would let's let's make this one marked down just to show you. So I'll do dot MD um, and then I'll just put in. I'm just going to paste in a bunch of text here as well. And obviously you can use, you know, all kinds of markdown. So we have two tutorials. Now I'm going to go ahead and generate my docs and let's take a look. And now we have tutorials. 
We have our calculated tutorial, our program tutorial. Now, this doesn't look too good. This title here, it's basically just it's going to use the name of the file by default. But what we can do is inside of the tutorials folder, we can create a file called tutorials.json. And in here, let's go ahead and open up some curly braces and we can put program, basically the name of the file tutorial and set that to an object. And then we can have title program title. Let's say calculator tutorial and set that. to have title tutorial. All right, so we'll save that and let's generate the doc again and check it out and look at that program title calculator wait, I put program title. It should be program um, tutorial or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Just showing you how to do it. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, let's say in our calculator JS, we actually want to point to that tutorial so we can go ahead and in the description here. Let's. Uh, whoops, what the hell did I just do. Let's go up to the description here and let's add. C. And we can actually open up some curly braces and we can put at tutorial and then we can point to the calculator dash tutorial. And now I'm going to generate the docs, go back. And now if I go and I look at my calculator module, you can see right here, see calculator tutorial and it will point me to that tutorial. All right. So obviously, you know, this is just a mess of code. It's not it's not uh, an actual program or anything, but you can really structure this to make a lot of sense and really help, you know, other people out as well as yourself. A lot of times we write code. We don't look at it for a few months and then we go back and we're like, what the hell does this even do? You know, so this will document everything for you, which is really cool. In addition to that, it'll give you um, some type checking functionality. All right, so I think we're just about done here. Let's go back to the home now for this area here. There's a few things we can do. We can actually add in. Let's go back to index.js and I'll have this code in the description. I'm not sure what I'm going to put it in. It might be a GitHub repo or it might be, um, I don't know, like a plunker or something. But here, let's add. Let's see, we'll go. right here and we can actually put in some JS stock and we can use at file and this so there's so many of these tags that I'm not going to go over that you can check out in the documentation. But let's just say index.js is the root file for this example app and we can actually put other things like author. We can put If we want, maybe we want to point to an external website, we could do C um, and we can put a link in here like this. I'll just put my website here. All right, so maybe you have a, you know, a website you want to put in here, stuff like that. And if I save this and then run it. take a look. Now we have this here it gives you it'll have the file name and then the description author um, source and the website. All right. Uh, and another thing we can do is we can actually add a read me here if we want to. So and you can directly edit the template as well, as long as it's not the actual template in the node modules folder. But let's say we have we create a read me file. You don't have to do all this stuff. I'm just kind of showing you guys the, you know, some of your options that you have. So we'll just say this is just a sample um, script on how to 
use js doc okay so we'll save this and then um, what we can do is go to our config file and in this config file we can add a readme obviously your readme would probably have a lot more than that but just to give you an example um, and then we're just going to point to that file so readme.md Okay, so let's run this and take a look and there it is. So this comes from our readme file. So we've built this documentation for just a nonsense program, but um, you can see all the all the different things that you can do with it. And there's a lot more. I'm just getting into um, kind of the fundamentals of JS doc. Now, if you're really interested in JS doc and you want to start using it, uh, what I would do is uh, I'm actually going to assign you some homework. So take something you've already built, some kind of JavaScript program. It could be something tiny. It could have been a tutorial that you followed on my channel or someone else's. It could be a large project and implement JS doc into it. Install it, set up the um, config file and add your JS doc comments where neat where you want uh, and create some documentation because as I said in my last video about tutorial hell just following along isn't enough you need to d dive in and, and do stuff on your own so I think that's a nice little homework assignment is to take something you've already built and just implement JS doc comments and generate some documentation all right guys that's it hopefully you enjoyed this if you did please leave a thumbs up and I'll see you next time